I'm Sriman. Welcome to my Structure for Life. In this video, I'll be sharing the top five strategies on how to study for chemistry, which are written on the whiteboard behind me. So for those of you guys who are worried on how to study for chemistry, especially be it the A levels or the O levels, they tend to have the same pattern. So let's look at the five strategies that I've written on the whiteboard. Number one, don't rely on text only. All right. Number two, apply atomic structure and chemical bonding, not reread. All right. Number three is to find patterns in mistakes that you make during your exams or tutorials, okay? Number four, it's the same thing, find patterns in the content that you read, the chapter content, all right? Number five, finding patterns in questions, all right? These are the five tips that I stuck to during when studying for exams and it really helped me push my grades a lot higher. So without further ado, let's visit these five strategies. Alright, the number one strategy is to not rely on text only. And this strategy is especially helpful for inorganic chemistry chapters such as periodic table or transition metals, especially even atomic structure as well, where they ask you to explain the trend in physical and chemical properties across a period and down a group. This strategy will help you. And how can you not just rely on text? The first strategy I will give you is visual visualization all right visualization your visual memory of your brain is really strong and you can memorize a lot more information because a picture speaks a thousand words doesn't it? we have heard of it so many times so how can you visualize stuff visualize trends there are probably a couple of ways you can do it there are graphs uh, there are also diagrams maybe so this would be more helpful for practical work okay like drawing a burette or pipette for example and in here i'm just going to show you an example from the chapter of periodic table one but i will be i'll be showing you the solubility of period three oxides in water okay and how we can graph it out so let's start i'm going to focus on graphs and not diagrams okay to show you what i mean all right so let's get going all right um, the fun thing about drawing graphs is that it's not like physics and math where you have to set like numbers on each axis. It can, you can be very flexible and draw any axis you want. For example, what I drew for periodic table was this, all right? So, like that, all right? And then, uh, the top axis was solubility of oxides in water. And then this was um, a long period three, all right? And how did I label the axis? You don't have to label the axis with numbers because solubility is not something that's really easily numerical. So what I did was I labeled it as very, uh, as well as slightly, as well as zero which technically means insoluble all right and then this is actually your long period three so i'll show you what the graph that i drew and then i'll explain to you what i mean all right it's not a straight line but you get the hang of it so this one will be n a to o all right this one would be the second element which is magnesium oxide this one will be al 3 the fourth one will be silicon dioxide this fifth one will be p4o10 okay phosphorus pentoxide and then the last one will be so3 all right so3 so you have six elements along period three now how is this helpful if you were to just read text and analyze the trend they will give you a table or they give you text in your notes and during exams they ask you to compare the solubility of this and that oxide you will struggle because you don't know the trend right so i've drawn a graph out for you sorry I've drawn a graph out for you so na2o is very soluble then this is slightly soluble these two are insoluble because of this 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 one has strong covalent bonding this is the 
polarization of the aluminium ion on the oxide ion. The silicon dioxide has strong covalent bonding, the giant molecular structure. This one form acids in water and this one also easily dissolved because they're ionic, right? They form ion dipole interactions. So this is what I mean by following the trend. And when you recall this during exams, it's very easy. Okay, you just look at the trend, you just picture it in your head and you're able to do well for exam. So this is just an example. Try to apply it to different topics in different situations. Now the second strategy is to apply atomic structure and chemical bonding, not reread, okay? There's an important trend that I want you guys to know, okay? So it is something that I raised in a previous video, if you have watched it, about the macro mind map, that all the topics in chemistry are centered on the core, which is atomic structure and chemical bonding, right? The important trend that I noticed was TM, which is transition metals, and PT started with explaining physical and chemical properties. Both topics started out explaining this. The trends in first ionization energy, second ionization energy, solubility, electrical conductivity. I have already studied this thing in atomic structure and chemical bonding. So why study again in periodic table and transition metals? And exactly, you're right. I did not study this when I studied periodic table and transition methods. I just ignored this. I went to the main essence of what the topic means. Instead, what you guys should do, right? The thing that you guys are good at, if your atomic structure and chemical bonding is good, that means that the chapter content, okay? Chapter content, the chapter content in atomic structure and chemical bonding, like the bond length, the bond strength, these are the things that you guys are good at, okay? But the problem that differentiates the high and the low grades is applying this okay applying atomic structure and chemical bonding to new topics all of you guys can study the chapter content like like bond strength bond length imf bonding you already studied that a lot of the people studying chemistry are good at that all right the problem is you can't apply the knowledge from these two chapters to newer topics like tm and periodic table that's what i did but a lot of people studying chemistry don't do that. They can't see how this topic and all the topics in chemistry link to each other. And this is something that you guys should figure it out on your own self, all right? So next time you start on a new topic, try to establish the link of this atomic structure and chemical bonding to that new topic. Try forcing your mind to think of the application, not just read, read what's written in the notes, read what's written in the notes and expect that you will do well for chemistry. Thank you.